go. Put that there for you. you. We're about to be coming over from today. Coventry. Okay. So, Where do you play your golf at? Uh, there's a club right there at Warwickshire. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Warwickshire. Quite, yeah, you, you need your driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> All around there. Yeah. Um, but no, I've only literally this year I became a member. Yeah. Um, just through work was a nice opportunity, and that's what's helped me play more and yeah. try and get my handicap down and all yeah. that kind of business. Cool. So, yeah. And obviously, you've got you booked in for irons today yeah. and wedges. Talk me through sort of what you've got. and. Uh, so, I was fitted about five years ago into, the, into these 919s. Yeah. Um, and the one thirty X. Yeah. It's just they've I can understand that now that I've learnt more, I can understand why I was fitting into the in the fact that you give us I think they've helped me for a straighter ball flight. But they're just they're dead. And there's no feeling, mm. they have no feeling. Mm. Just because of when I grab say my friends' clubs and I think like, well oh, I can feel the head in that. Where mine <laughs> I feel yeah. nothing. Yeah. But I love the soft feel of these. Yes, of the Mizunos, yeah. Yeah, of the heads. Um, and so whether, what category these are in. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the categories of players, distance players. Uh, yeah, probably more players forged players iron. There's forged. not quite as much tech in the, in yeah. the, the JPX tour head. It's more of a sort of solid forging, yeah. more down the road of um, the construction of a blade. But obviously there's that sort of slight yeah. mad, um, you know, mid cavity in there as yeah, well. So that's definitely where I would say nowhere near blade. Yeah, need that help. Yeah, even considering maybe if, am I am I placed distance because of the forgiveness they offer, not for the mm. distance. Mm, I mean, yeah, good, but for yeah. the forgiveness. So, do I lose out on my not strikes because I'm not consistent? With sure, strikes? sure. Um, I would say my more bad shots are just the fatter ones. Yeah. Um, heavy strikes, yeah, yeah typically. Heavy yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so working a lot to try and uh, obviously at the start off I was a fade, but now I'm really trying to work on the straight. And if I go, if it goes left, on yeah, me kind of thing. Um, yeah, but you lose it out to the right. right if it goes right in, only if I've left the face open that way. Yeah. that was because I've worked hard not to. Yeah, as we all start the over the top and all yeah. this, but try and work not to have that swing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that's down to shaft or if it's, we'll, we'll see what, what you yeah. put me in and. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, I'll let you get there. moving because obviously you've got to have yeah. a bit of a drive down here. So I'll let okay. you get warmed up. Uh, nine or pitching wedge? Um, whatever you feel comfortable with. We'll be using six irons during the session. We okay. just feel like that gives us the best reflection of the top and the bottom end of the bag. Yeah, no worries. So um, we'll eventually we'll move into a six iron. But if you want to hit some nines, uh, nine yeah. irons off the front mat okay. there. Cost, just feel free to do that. I'm no get problem. This set up for you. Just got some warm up balls there for you. These ones? We'll, yeah, we'll just drop it into what you use normally. What okay. ball do you use? Um, I was the Bridgestone Tour BS. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've moved into the TP5X, I think a, a lower spinning ball. I, I believe I have high spin, a lot of spin. Uh, right. Quite high, so that's why I wanted to go with the, uh, the less spinning ball. Yeah, sure, okay. Oh, good to go. Yeah, no, you go away. Yeah. I'm just going to get some readings yeah. with your current irons. So uh, I'll literally just let you get warmed up. We're not using these for any data at all, these shots okay. here. <clears throat> How much golf are you typically getting to play? Uh, twice, a, twice a week. Okay. Um, Monday, Wednesdays. So this is this has been a bit of our off, our society it took a little break. Yeah. And our next our beginning of the season's next Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so we uh, uh yeah it's generally I've had a little break for the last three or four weeks. Yeah. Okay.
This feels quite nice. Not, it's not usual yeah. driving range, Matt. Yeah, a little bit softer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it allows you to get into the back of the ball a little bit more. Yeah. A bit more realistic. Yeah. Are you working on the, on your game with anybody right now? No, I'm I'm literally all YouTube, YouTube, and trying to be okay. that, that, that. So I've literally I had one lesson years ago, but I just don't tr trust someone. I haven't found. I wanted that recommendation from somebody to go with a an actual uh, someone that could, I don't want someone to change everything from me. That's what I mean. Right. So what are you, what are you sort of working on then in your game? What are your fields and stuff at the moment? So generally with irons, I just, um, the real come, the hands inside where the head out, that yeah. kind of one. And as soon as I try and get to that point, flip, do this wrist up to try and get it and then go from there. That's all yeah. I've said with the irons. Yeah. Uh, and ball, and ball it, it's, it's, it's helped me find strike a little bit better doing that. Yeah. Um, and then ball flight, that's what I mean. I think I'm quite high and that's why I, I am at the time where I should be getting with someone to tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but it's like I say, finding that person sure. to do it. But yeah, ball for, I think it's quite high. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Is, is it my ball quite spinny? Yeah. Uh, maybe because I do my wrist and I come up, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's a bit underneath. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a high ball flight. Yeah, sure. And in terms of direction? Um, you say you sometimes you lose it right and then you kind of you feel like you're yeah it's left it's it, i'm always trying to be a straight shot i'm not trying to in my mind draw this or fade that or yeah i see it that way i i want a straight shot i know nothing's ever straight but that's how i yeah. want to do it It's the whole argument of, um, uh, they say to lower your handicap, you've got to start, uh, if you see a draw, start playing a draw or mm -hmm. fade into this shot or being able to play play the shots that you see. Sure. Really. So it's whether to have, for me, it's now, because it's only been a year of me getting into playing regularly, mm -hmm. have the confidence to do that on a golf course. Uh, yeah. I could do it in a drawing range or whatever. <coughs> but yeah, it's taking it onto the golf, yeah, onto the course. Yeah, if I'm in a course, and I want to score well, I'm just looking to hit it straight. Yeah. Hit everything straight. Yeah. I'm not trying to mess around thinking, well, I want to draw on this shot. And, uh, it's, I think, uh, I think there's, there's a lot made about shapes, but I think, you know, even if you look at the best guys in the world, a lot of them will have a predominant shape that they'll play with, whether it be a fade or a draw. You know, you're looking yeah. at Rory predominantly right to left. You're looking at someone like a John Rahm or a Dustin Johnson, guys like that, they'll, you know, fades. Yeah. They'll play the shot if it's required, but I think if you was to put them on a straight hole, they would see the ball flight from one way so, or the oh, other. So, yeah, that's interesting. In the fact that I mean, I say straight, but it's probably a little fade. <clears throat> yeah, is what yeah, it is. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, uh, your version saying. of straight, I guess. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's always a, there's always anomalies. Obviously, Tiger Woods used to shape a lot of shots, and yeah. he used to hit different trajectories, highs, lows, and all the rest of it. And he was a he's a, a complete real, artist with it. But yeah. I think nowadays, most of the guys go on tour. They're predominantly they play one shot shape, 
and their, their swing is designed around that, that you know way, yeah. de definitely that sort of that power cut shape has become yeah. a lot more prominent on tour now especially with driver you know actually like, with driver how they can hit it so far with playing a fade like, mm. we see it as losing distance well it's just fade. they've got Isn't plenty it? of club head speed so then yeah. they're just they're just trying to they add control in and that cut shape just gives them that little bit more control you know yeah I'll give you a six iron here, Costas, I'll let yep. you hit a few off this back mat just to get used to that. You let me know when you're feeling warm and we'll get going. Okay. Yeah. It's my least favourite club in my bag at six. Six. I have a five and a seven. Okay. <laughs> what do you tend to find with this? It's, it, it, uh, to be fair, it's only now I've become better at striking it. That's that's usually a bit of a fade. Yeah. But I can lose it. Yeah. Even more. Whereas seven, a bit, a bit. Bit more consistent. It's, yeah, it's consistent on strike, isn't it? That's probably gone a little bit. Yeah, open face. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, what I might do is I might just throw in some Pro V's to start with because we've got the the RCT balls here, okay. so they help to pick pick up the spin nice and accurately. Yeah. <clears throat> Profile-wise, pretty similar to what you're using anyway. That's right. If you then, if we want to throw in some TP5Xs, once we've established kind of what okay. we're doing with the setup, then we can do. I just need to yeah, yeah, put some no metallic worries. dots on them to read them inside. But I do find using the, the RCT balls that they've got in particular, which basically have the chip built into them, it just means oh, that all okay. the spin numbers are very accurate. You That's see right, yeah, session, I'll so. carry on with them. Yeah, That's right. cool, no cool. Problem. All right, so pretty much as you've been doing, mm -hmm. process just straight down the white line for me. Yep. Anywhere in that area there is good. Mm -hmm. I'll just watch you move it. I'll ask you a few questions as we go, and then okay. uh, we'll look at the data together, and we'll get we'll get going from there. Okay. Are you predominantly right-handed? Yeah. Yeah. I, the only thing I do with my left is right. <laughs> right you right left. with your left, okay. Yeah. But I would play tennis with my right. Oh, you have a sport, yeah. yeah right-handed, okay. Any injuries to report at all? Anything no. that sort of stops you from swinging the golf club the way you want to? No, no. No, nope. all good. good so far. What would be your typical distance you would pull six iron out on the golf course? Do you work off carry or total distance? Or um, I'd be the 170, yeah, 170. 170 mark, yeah, laser it, 170, yeah. six iron. Yeah. Six iron. That should be straighter. Hmm. All right, let's go one more, please, Costas, and then mm -hmm. we'll. I'll just go through the numbers with you. <clears throat> no, 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 no. 
All right, thank you. I mean, how did they feel? Do you feel um, they're fairly representative? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I, I lost them quite a bit right than what I usually do, I would yeah. say. Uh, just, yeah, face, but do you think that strike could be was good. Potentially, maybe a little bit of alignment. Would you say you you aim straight traditionally or do you aim a little bit left of target? I'd, or do you play for the fade? Yeah, I, no, I would have aimed it probably a little bit left, but not that much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, generally, strike was good. Uh, yeah. Came through it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's have a little look through the numbers. Um, are you? Have you seen your numbers before in terms of on a on a trap man or any of the launch monitors? Before? Yeah. More with seven eyes, not six eyes. But yeah, I've seen a few. Yeah. What technology do you tend to work with? Um, oh no, just with trap man. Just with trap man. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you're, you're fairly fitting. familiar with this yeah, sort of yeah. stuff here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll I'll run through them. Any questions you got, stop me as you're going through. Just ask away. But we've got. You can see the average club head speed, ninety one point four. Fairly consistent throughout. That swing there, number 18, was a little bit slower, but mm -hmm. take him out, yeah, pretty much just a hair under 92. So okay. you pretty much bang on what would be classed as the current um, PJ Tour 6 iron or 7 iron average okay. effectively in and around that area. So um, 92 miles an hour is about where the boys are. That's probably going to obviously go up over the next couple of years yeah, because definitely. the guys coming out on tour are just getting bigger and yeah, faster yeah. all the time. So, But at the moment, you know, so you've got, you've got decent speed. Mm -hmm. um, and then in relation to that, we've got your ball speed here. Peaked out uh, with the first shot you hit for me and the last shot there at 126, which is, you know, there or thereabouts where you where you should be. Okay. Um, and then you can see here, slight miss, uh, miss strike here. We dropped off. And then the other three here, decent, decent enough strikes, just a couple of miles an hour difference in there, yeah. 120, 122, 123. Okay. This number here, smash factor. Um, it's out of an optimal of 1.50, but we tend to see that more with the woods, drivers, right. fairwoods, etc. We're not looking to get achieve a 1.50 with six nine. iron, for example. Sure. The reason for that is the element of spin. So obviously adding more spin in, the, the ball flight scene is less efficient by the system, so to okay. speak, or by the equation, I should say. Sure. So with a six iron, I would say, ideally, I want to get you to about 1.40. Okay. 138 to 140 as an average. If we find a really nice, efficient flight, we might even get you to sort of 1.41, 1.42. And what I mean by that is maximal More ball efficient. speed and then the, the spin being in the right window as well. Right, all all yeah. things being equal, that okay. will effectively you'll that's, get that smash to kind of, kind of around the 1.41, 1.42 yeah. area. But 138 to 140 as an average okay. would be really nice today. So you can see there we are leaving a little bit of efficiency on the table. That's yeah. pretty much what it's telling us. Uh, in terms of launch and spin, <clears throat> I'd definitely say you're on the higher side. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, based on a launch of about 19, you know, if I wanted you to be more compact in your flight, I'd probably be looking for your spin to be around 5,000 RPMs. Yeah. That's pretty much what I tend to fit six irons to nowadays anyway. Yeah. I think that's more of a modern day spin. Okay. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of the faces now on the irons have gotten thinner and therefore they've gotten quicker and oh, okay. spin rates have gotten a little bit lower as well. Right. Now being somebody who moves the ball from left to right, you're going to carry a bit more spin anyway. Gonna... But I would still say sort of five, seven as an average is a little bit on the high side. Sure. And when, when you don't quite get it right and you, goes, your flight it move, a you lose it a little bit more right, you, you get even more spin again sure. and therefore you're going to lose distance and you lose a bit of control over it. Okay. So that will be the first thing I'd be looking to do is maybe bring down your launch and your spin a little bit more, give mm -hmm. you a bit more penetration. Um, yeah. Not that you know, I've played at the Warwickshire, not that you play somewhere particularly windy, mm. but I just think in the UK we, we play in such different conditions across all the seasons, you know. The Warwickshire it can, it can, can get, be, can get a and bit I windy. struggle yeah. so much with, um, with, with high with, ball. Yeah, flight. with high ball, with the wind coming straight. We played Burner and Barrow yeah. for six, and I struggled. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I somewhere struggled. down there on the, on the coast of the, you yeah, know, whether it be in the northwest or <laughs> your was. flight would be just too high. So, yeah. so I definitely feel like we could bring launch and spin down for you today, give you a bit more penetration, which will in turn give you more control as well. Okay. Uh, you, you were bang on, you said, you know, 170, pretty much where you are. You did get one here, but that really came out quite quick. Mm. Um, and funny enough, slightly lower launch, slightly lower spin number there, and you can see it has given you additional yardage. Okay. And I would actually say, based on where you are at 92, that's a little bit low for your carry yardage, to be completely oh, okay. honest with you. You should be carrying the ball further than that. I'll show you exactly where we, we should be um, mm -hmm. shortly. But yeah, 171, pretty much a bang on what you mentioned it, or where it should be. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to the way that you move the golf club into the ball, uh, we've got angle of attack here. So in terms of interpreting the, the track man data, anything with a minus number for angle of attack means down as you probably know already. Mm -hmm. And anything with a minus number in terms of the club path and the face path number mean left. And anything with a positive number means to the right. So what it's basically telling me is you're on the shallower side of angle of attack. Yeah. So I can't imagine you take particularly big divots, if at all, on the golf yeah, course. Yeah, always um, at the top, crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, PJ Tour averages about minus four down, and then mm -hmm. you've got guys, you know, some of the better players in the world nowadays, uh, Brooks Kepka, Taylor Gooch, those kind of guys would almost be sixes and sevens down on the ball. Yeah. So they tend to launch it at about 12 degrees and they spin it at sort of about 6,000, but yeah. that's because of the way that they present they the, the club to the ball. Yeah, so for you, you're on the shallower side, so I'd expect your launch to be up a little bit, but I would expect your spin to be down a little bit because of that combination. But you're launching your spinner up a little bit, so that's telling me that the club's not doing a particularly good job for you, basically, okay. Costas. Um, club path, traditionally across the ball, um, mm -hmm. six degrees, uh, 6.7 degrees from out to in. Yeah. So that would sort of explain mm -hmm. the fade shape. And then really it's just based on your face in relation to that, how much movement you're going to get. Yeah. As a rule of thumb, what we like to work towards is wherever the club path is, I like the face to be half of it. So the ideal combination here would be if we round that down, let's say to minus six, I'd like that to be plus three. Oh, okay. And that means that basically you would start the ball ever so slightly left the target based on where your angle of attack is. And then it would fade back onto target line. Right, okay. At the moment, because this is this number here is actually stronger than this number, the ball's starting pretty straight and then it's fading and then a bit more. Away. Yeah. Right. With that also means that because the face isn't squaring up, it's open. So you're producing more what we call dynamic loft, and therefore that'll explain why you're launching it higher oh, okay. and why you're spinning it more as well. So yeah. the main thing that I need to do from a club fitting perspective is give you try and give you a setup here where we can try and feel like this, the face squares up a little bit better for you. Mm -hmm. That'll bring your dynamic loft yeah. down, bring your launch down, bring your spin down, basically. So okay. in terms of explaining dynamic loft, that's how much loft you're presenting at impact. Right. The measured loft on your six iron is 29.5. And dynamically... Uh, it moved around a little bit, but on the whole, it was um, 23.7. If I take that one out, which is a slight missed strike, you're at 24. So, you know, you're losing about five degrees of loft off the golf club. Oh, OK. Now, if I compare that to generally if I have a pro in the bay or a strong amateur, they tend to take about 10 to 12 degrees of dynamic loft off the golf club. So if they had a 30 degree six iron, their dynamic loft would be sort of 20, oh, right, 18 okay. to 20. So even more you... Yeah, yeah oh, okay. that, that's the really strong hitters. That's not the case for everybody, but that's, mm. you know, that's just showing that the guys really for do sure. lean the shaft quite yeah. a lot. Because you don't lean the shaft quite so much, that means that we can afford to lose a little bit of base loft off the golf club. Right. The magic number I'm typically looking for here is 20 to 22 degrees. 20 would be for somebody looking at lower ball flight altogether. Yeah. 22 would be somebody who's looking for a real sort of mid ball flight. So that's basically okay. telling me that I could probably afford to take around two degrees of base loft off the club yeah. um, to help you. So if, I'm, okay. if we're at 29 at the moment, I can look at heads at around 27, basically. Right, that's, okay. that's the way I look at the equation, right, yeah. as, long, as well as the shaft as well, because that, right. the shaft will influence how we present loft. So combination of the shaft yeah. and losing a bit of loft off the head as well, I think that will help us bring that launch and spin into a better area for you. Okay. Let's have a little look at dispersion. So definitely predominantly right to the target. Mm -hmm. That line there is five yards right. That yard, that line there is five, uh, 15 yards right, I should say, sorry. Mm -hmm. you know, average kind of UK green, 25 yards in this sort of area here. Yeah. So you know, even if you did aim a little bit left to target, you're still predominantly fading them onto the right-hand side of the mm -hmm. hole, and that, that's what you mentioned happens. Yeah. And then you might compensate occasionally by flipping the hands mm -hmm. and lose a couple in this area here. So, mm -hmm. so again, really, if I can just polish up that face-to-path number, yeah. I think you're going to see less less dispersion because um, you're going to see less shape on the ball. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for. So we'll just we'll keep that in mind, but we're looking to obviously improve that. Let's have a little look at impact on the face. What would you say your predominant strike is? Do you know where you typically your predominant strike on the face is? It, Toey, high to Toey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Which would make sense because you're yeah. kind of taking the club across the ball, I'm right? To, yeah. So let's have a little look. If that one was a little bit healy. Yeah. Not bad centered. That was that was your toe one you talk yeah. about. That's generally the one that I really say, oh, I've hit it toe. Maybe the other ones I don't feel. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I know when when it striked in the middle, you you you, you can yeah. notice that. But any yeah. other ones, I don't feel as much unless a toe. Yeah. And I mean, that's your strike pattern there. It's, you know, the odd, mm -hmm. that single sort of toe strike, but mm -hmm. predominantly pretty good. So that tells okay. me that length of the club isn't too bad. You've right. got six iron here is 37 and a half inches, yeah. which is pretty much men's standard length. So I feel like the length of the golf club is pretty good for you. I don't feel like we need to go longer or shorter. Okay. Um, strike pattern's a little bit high. So yeah. that tells me that it's just, it's, it's being tracked a little bit behind you and therefore you're not quite able to cover it. And ideally I want to be maybe you know, four you grooves it. up, I would yeah. say, probably be ideal for yeah. you. So that's just a little bit high on the face, so it's bottoming out a little bit 
sure. before the ball, which again, you did say heavy strikes. Yeah, yeah, that, that you can sort of struggle with. They just happen and that's it, it's just ruined the whole. Yeah, and then uh, I mentioned where you need to get your numbers to to be classed as optimal. So um, this tool here is called the Optimizer. And what it effectively does is it takes your club head speed and then it gives us a slight blue section. This is where your numbers need to be to be classed as optimal based on your speed. Right. Now, it, I haven't typed in there that I don't want it to be a failure or a draw or anything else. It's just based on dead straight flight, mid trajectory. Yeah. So you can see here, we know that your angle attack is a little bit on the shallow side, but ideally we want to try and get your launch to around 16 and we want your spin to be well, anywhere between sort of 5,000 and 5.5 5 would be great. I'd yeah, probably say on the lower side of it. Um, 5,000 would be good for you because okay. I think your launch is going to be a little bit high of optimal based on your angle of attack. Right. Okay. Unless this changes as well, which it could based on changing shaft up for you. All right. This is your spin loft. So this is your angle of attack and your dynamic loft combined. Now I mentioned that we could you drop a couple of degrees and you can see here, we, it's still saying that we could probably drop that by a couple of degrees to yeah. get you closer to 24. Ball speed, you're pretty good, but it'd be interesting to see if we can pick that up. I mean, based okay. on being 80, being at 92 miles an hour, I would expect you to be closer to sort of one, one two eight, one two nine. So All we'll right. see if we can pick up a bit more of additional speed. Okay. And then peak height at once um, around 100 feet would be perfect for you. And at the moment, that shot there, which is probably the best of the bunch, was mm -hmm. cruising at about 114. So you're about 14 yeah. feet higher than where it would it want you to be optimally. Oh, right, yeah, which okay. will explain again what you're seeing out on the golf yeah. course, right? Um, in terms of optimal distance, that particular shot was about eight yards down. Mm -hmm. Um, but you mentioned to me you hit it about 170, mm, that's early, right, one, early 170, yeah. so that's telling me that you're almost missing out on about 16 yards. Okay. So you're almost a club, club and a half down where you should, should be. Right. Now, we may not get exactly to that number based on if you play a fade that typically yeah. takes a bit of distance off of it, but there's still definitely distance to be had there for the same right. amount of effort. So we'll see if, okay. we, can, see if we can top into that for yeah. you. And as, as I run through the other shots, you'll see that you launch, your spin, therefore your peak height's on the high side as is your spin loft mm -hmm. same there same there uh, everything same there. i'm working with my swing is to try and take the fade out <laughs> sure sure yeah. so i feel i feel like we yeah. need to to yeah. blend the club a little bit for that okay. as well so you know in terms of looking at your setup it's pretty standard standard length the swing weights are you know not particularly same. high there they're pretty good mm -hmm. um and then looking at you know where your, your loft is uh 29 and a half which is pretty standard for a head of this model and your lie angle's at 62, so again, that's pretty, that's pretty... Traditional lofts, is that what they're saying? Traditional yeah. loft and the lie yeah. angle as well at 62s. I mean, Mizuno can be a little bit flatter sometimes at 61, mm. but again, that, I'd say that's middle of the road for modern day spec. So okay. there's nothing too funky in there. Mm. The only thing is, I would say, you know, C-Taper 130 is a pretty heavy duty shaft. Even on tour, there's not that many guys who play it. Right. It's really designed at somebody who moves it maybe even quicker than you, and you've got good speed. Yeah. And, it, and it's... What, how we would describe in the industry is a bawdy shaft. And what I mean by that is it, it, there's not much movement in it. Mm. So that's what you're picking what up is. on from a field perspective. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you hit your, your friend's clubs, which will probably be lighter and a bit softer, a yeah. bit, bit higher torque, and therefore you're able to sort of make the shaft work for you a little bit. You can this really one, feel the head. You really have this, to move it. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. seems like you've got to go at my full speed all the time, mate. If I try and do half, three quarters, say, yeah. Uh, yeah, 70 mile an hour shot, slowly down, yeah. I, I don't, it never works. No, no, you, it, it, it's, it's, a full, it's a full bore shaft, yeah. that one. It's not designed right. for the guy who wants to hit partial shots. Yeah, so, sure. you know, the guys you would play that on tour, Gary Woodland played it, you know, that yeah. hits it an enormous distance. <laughs> I think even Justin Rose went into it for, for a short period of time, but mm. I know he's come away from it now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty heavy duty. So, I mean, yeah. definitely by losing a bit of weight off of it, and by softening the profile, I think mm -hmm. that can help. Okay. But I do want to still give you a shaft that controls spin. So I still want to go to something that's a little bit firmer in the tip section to try and give you a bit of control. I was probably well. giving it because they wanted to lower my spin down. Higher I think, spins I think that way. correct, it's been put yeah. in your hands because he, he's probably gone down the route of heavier shaft required. You've seen your speed, he's gone heavier shaft required, C taper, okay. trying to kill a bit of spin. But I think it's almost gone too far. Right. Uh, and because of that, it, it, it's a bit more hard work for you. It gets stuck yeah. on the right hip a little bit, and then therefore you're not able to square the face up. Okay. So you're not able to get the most out of the shaft. So especially if you're somebody who likes to play partial shots, something which is a softer profile and a bit lighter will, will allow you to do that. Whereas, as you said, with that one, you've got to feel like it's yeah. full ball. I feel I've got time. to go, I want to have full shots. Or, uh, yeah. yeah, I want to go at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you probably, your back probably hurts a little <laughs> yeah. bit when you finish with it as yeah, well. But, so let, let me put something together. Okay. If there's any, is there anything head-wise you've seen or you, you, you're completely agnostic and you're just open to see what comes out today? I, I've 
got an idea, but I want to let you put me into. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want too thick a top. Too thick a top line. Like that and, sure. But oh, I'm happy to be open. Let me, unless you want me to say the. No, 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 no. Well, we'll see if we match up by yeah, the end of it. it. But you know, I, I think the, my personal opinion of these fits is if you come up just open-minded. Yeah, yeah. And and we just see what we come out with. Obviously, I'm okay. going to take your feedback on board, and I want to try and match them with what visually what you want to see. But I'm, I'm purely picking heads here based on what I know about them from a loft perspective and a, a CG placement and That's their right. characteristics. You, yeah, so see how we go. We don't really see brand here. We just see. That's we, it. we just know what the heads do and what the shafts do. So sure. I'll put something together for you. Okay. You have to excuse the uh, <laughs> flip flops today. I've injured my foot, oh, so yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah, that's all good. It's not my usual look, believe yeah, me. Actually, you can't, I just thought comfort. Yeah, yeah well, well, no, no. It's, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a flip flop guy, to be honest with you. No, um, needs must. So. <laughs> what, golf injury? Or? No, sadly not a golf injury. No, I was actually getting out the sea and uh, oh, twisting my toe. So it's. Uh, oh, yeah. right, okay. But it's all good. It's all good. That's all right. Have a little look. So I think swing weight wise, I didn't mind where yours was in terms of okay. the balance of it. I just think there was too much weight on the shaft. So I'm going to drop the weight down to start with. Yeah. And then we'll build it back up again. Do you want me to tell you, tell you what you've got heads wise or do you want no, to just hit would, them? Or? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, cool. I like that. Right. Let me just put the tag in for you. Okay. Same again. We'll hit six shots of each one. Okay. You just let me know. Any feedback on it? Okay. Definitely feels lighter. <laughs> All right, good to go. Yeah. Take you a couple of swings to get into it again, yeah. obviously. Haven't played your model for, for four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The way you I get always used describe club fit when you first give somebody a club, it's a bit like a rental car, right? You know. That's it. <laughs> Gotta just figure it out. That was more the one I was hoping to see. Okay. You know, that was the that was a good a good nice good job. swing. Yeah. Got the contact. Yeah. Still faded, but okay. it's more muted. Not so much. Um, launch and spin in a good area. We've dropped quite a bit of spin off of there, but I don't mind it because we've still got the launch. And then okay. good ball speed there at one, two, three. Let's go a couple more for me. Take him out. I don't feel like that's a reflection of the setup there. Take out the first. Delete them. Just no, take nice them feel to the, to the head. To the head, yeah. yeah. Really nice. Better swing again. Nice. That one, isn't it? Stripe was there, but it's gone. Yeah. Let's go two more, please. Okay. Costa took one out there because it was the, the, the thin stripe. Yeah. Don't feel like that was really relevant. Took a couple of the first ones out just because they were 
No problem. You have a new club in your hand for four years. <laughs> It's a struggle. It's a struggle to find the. Okay. Cool. All right. Just before we look at numbers, what was what was your your feedback on um, on that? Would you say? Just the f uh, feel lighter. Yeah. It was a lot lighter. Uh, nice, uh, as I said, soft feel to the face. Just felt lighter. It's not that, not necessarily like a same feel as mine in the fact that it's not the heaviness, but yeah. not like I could feel the head more. You felt like you could feel the head more. Uh, a little bit, but a not bit, as much. Not as much. As mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just yeah, lighter weight. Yeah. Yeah, it had the feel of I should be able to swing this easy. Yeah. But it still felt like I was. Yeah, you didn't feel like quite had enough weight. Yeah, I mean it's it's to come so to it's it. KBS Torvi 120X. Okay. So I've come down by 10 grams. Yeah. Still in something which is relatively um, tip stiff. You know that frequency is at a sort of six and a half. So okay. it's not quite as stiff as the uh, as what you've got there in terms of the C tapers, which are yeah. you know, a real X flex at 130. Right. This probably sits in between both of them. I would I would say between an X and an S. Mm -hmm. um, standard length 37 and a half inches. And then we went into the the Strixon head, the ZX7. Yeah. Um, just went into that just because it, it is ever so slightly bigger than what you've come from there in terms of the not the Mizuno in, yeah. um, JPX tours, but uh, it, a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. Um, typically, we find slightly lower spin rates with the with the Swixen series, the ZX7s okay. and the ZX5s so for that matter. Well, I didn't see it as a, the top line being too much thicker than, but yeah, no, as no, a nice not. size head and. Yeah. I think yeah. apart from if I go into something which like the JPX tours, right. everything <clears> I give you is probably going to be slightly bigger in the top line today, just purely because mm -hmm. I am looking to. Give you a little less good. loft yeah. and something which is maybe marginally more forgiving okay. um, just to try and help you out yeah so everything might look at, at you know slightly bigger because you're pretty what you've got there is pretty compact yeah um okay. but yeah and then so uh, that was swinging at d one and a half so it's actually the swing weight was lighter than what you've come from i wouldn't mind putting a couple of grams on it to see it swing again because i'm getting the impression now that you um although i've dropped the weight you want something heavier in the head yeah, I think in terms that you're, you're, you're looking I mean. for that feel in the head. Yeah. So let me give you a bit more head weight. Okay. So we've kept the we'll keep the shaft weight down, but I give you a bit more, bit more head weight. Let's see if we find the strike that way because we still okay. had a couple of strikes low on the face. Yeah. When you did get it, you know. So if I go into the data here, for example, you can see you got the shot brought, we wanted. Definitely right. brought the spin down. Yeah. Um, and this was off of a slightly slower swing speed because you're up at kind of like 92, so you dropped it mm -hmm. by down by a couple of miles an hour. Um, but you can, you can see that's a much more compact flight. You're actually a bit shallower with it as well, which is quite interesting. Um, but the dynamic loft is that number I was trying to get, 222. To get to, yeah. So again, just because you squared the face up, that's why you, you right, found okay. that. Again, if I put that into the optimizer tool and we look off mid trajectory, optimal would be 182 and you're at 184 there. Um, again, because you were shallower, launch right. was up, but the spin was down to complement it. Okay. And if you remember, we were working towards sort of 100 feet or yeah. 99 feet. We were at 108, so it's definitely brought that flight down from sort of That's 115 where you, where yeah. you were previously. So okay. definitely trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you were a little bit more down with your angle of attack, these two <coughs> numbers here would stabilize and we'd get a little bit lower launch, a little bit more spin. Right. But that would be something where I think today what we'll do is we'll fit you for something that times really nicely and then you can continue going away and doing your work. See. Yeah, but I think. Fair. By the end of the session, you'll be maybe a bit more aware of what you're actually doing in terms of dynamically. Yeah, sure. And that will enable you to go away and work on angle attack or whatever right, it might okay. be. But, you know, I don't, I don't mind that combination based right. on that angle of attack. But if you want to get a bit steeper, yeah. these two numbers here will just stabilise. They will go the box. Okay. Yeah, so that's that basically work. What, would, what we could expect to happen. So, so yeah, so I have to do a few lessons and things like that, then yeah. I can see what to work on. If I've got a direction, then maybe... Yeah, and, and, and look, not, ev not everybody will look to try and get you massively right. down on the golf ball, but, but typically, if you can create more compression, um, that will perform better across different conditions so yeah you know, that might be something that a coach might look to try and get you more down on the golf ball and yeah. as i say if you look at the best guys in the world now yeah, they are typically sort of four to four to five to six to seven degrees down on the ball so that's <laughs> definitely the way things are, are trending yeah. nowadays yeah All right. i'm just going to grab some lead tape and no put that worries. on for you because there isn't any 
in the bay. So I'm just going to give you some more weight on the head. Mm -hmm. Feel off the, the head of the Srixen? You it was, yeah, when I hit that nice, you could really feel the softness to it. Yeah. It was probably, you probably say mine should be softer, but I would say similar. But yeah. Yeah. Nice, really nice feel. Again, typically the, the Mizunos are always a It's the, a what they put into your heads are Mizuno, nothing feels. Yeah, nothing you, feels like a Mizuno. And, yeah, and to be honest with you, they've, they've continued that trend with their latest <coughs> MP range as well. The yeah. 223, 225. Yeah, yeah. The, the JPX the, tours this year have been really well received as well. I, re I really wish, well, I've looked at, I've seen the 225s and I love the look, how they look like a blade, but I know they're the hollow back. The, two, the 225, yeah. yeah. I, obviously I brought that head over yeah. here. I'll be honest, that probably would have been the head I'd have gone into to start with. But because you made the comments about the top line, I, was ju oh, I just thought that might be a little bit too big and it might it's put you off. I just wanted to really identify shaft first, but I've yeah. got it with me because I think we, we will throw it into the equation eventually. Yeah, it is a little bit lower lofted than the other heads I've got mm -hmm. here. So okay. I think in terms of control and the launch and the spin, it will definitely do a good job on that for you. Mm -hmm. So I've got that to D3 now. All right. So originally it was D1 and a half, and now it's at D3. <coughs> I'm just going to put the additional tag in here for you. All right, good to go. Okay. Interesting, because that's the first one you've hit left today. Mm -hmm. How did that one feel, the weight, the additional weight through the swing? Just felt nice, it came through. Well, yeah. Came through quite nice. That was me, open head. It's just feel... I was toey. That should be a nice one. That was a good move again. Yeah. I like that. That, that felt nice. Yeah. It through? Really nice set of numbers there. Ball speed's good. Launch okay. and spins in a nice area. Yeah. Dynamic loft at 22. A little bit higher again, but again, it, it is predominantly that fade okay. sort of. Uh, that creates that one, yeah. Yeah, that, it, you'll always be on the slightly higher side of flight because of that. You okay. Know? But again, that might be something where you just decide with the angle of attack and how much loft you present, you might decide to take that down a little bit with technique. <laughs> yeah. If not, if not. Yeah, so if you came in to, exact, you know, to come and see me yeah. and you said, look, you know, Nick, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my swing, but I am where I am. Mm. I just want you to fit the golf club around me. Then that's when we would decide to go into something which is stronger lofted. Right, okay. Um, if, if it's something where you want to work on your game, then it would be something where I would fit you to something that you can meet right, up with okay. and marry, and in the middle, the numbers would be perfect. See, as right? I say, I, I ideally would like to, but I haven't got a coach, I haven't got, no, I'm not doing no. so. I think I'd prefer to go on the rooms of, this is what I am now, yeah. and, and let's work on Just get that the, way. Just get the yeah. gear into the perfect yeah. spot for it. Okay, cool. Nice. Oh, did not get it. It's interesting though, isn't it? He definitely seemed to prefer like the, the weight. Yeah. I, I have always, I like to feel the head, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. Not yeah, that yeah. I know where it's at, but. Yeah, no, I think everybody does. Yeah. It's just, it, it, there's, a, there's a tipping point between, for a lot of people who aren't as strong as you in the swing and as quick. Yeah. If you give them too much head weight or too much shaft weight, it gets stuck. Okay. For you, 
mm. the shaft weight of the 130 was a, was a little bit on the high side for your technique. Right. But you you want the additional head weight, so actually something yeah. which is more that ba balanced that way is quite good for you. Definitely the shaft you can f it has more feet like there is, with mine. There's just there's nothing. It's just straight. Very boardy. I mean, yeah. this is still pretty pretty firm, by the way. The Tour right. V. 120x, but it's it's not quite as uh, harsh as yours. Nice strike, but I think yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely, lovely soft feel to the heads. Mm -hmm. Really nice heads. Let's see uh, one more with this, please. Okay. Oh, slightly heavy that Maybe one. one more. <laughs> or not. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a little look at, at what they did. I'll take out that last one, mm -hmm. if that was representative. Um, but that's pretty much where we are, numbers wise. So club head speed's at 90, it seems to have stabilised around 90 miles an hour now. Ball speed there, 122, two. so actually still a little bit slower than what you've got, but the mm -hmm. club head speed's down comparatively. Um, smash factor 1.35, 19 four on the launch, but the main difference there is, is the spin. Again, because not most of your, the majority of shots with your existing uh, the, the current setup were mm. to the right hand side, so a lot more dynamic loft and therefore a lot more spin. The good shots that you hit there with the uh, with the ZX7 in that particular shaft at D3, um, straighter shots. So therefore, yeah. the spin came down right. to more about where we want it. I think I mentioned 5,000 yeah, at the start absolutely. of the session. That's yeah. pretty much where we wanted to be. So therefore, distance is up a little bit as well on average from 174 to 179. And that's really just spin based because the ball speed stayed the same pretty much. Okay. Club path has become a little bit more neutral. So it's okay. not quite as exaggerated because I don't think it sits quite as much behind you. You don't have to feel like you have to heave it over the top okay. as much. So that's actually neutralized a little bit by two degrees. And in the face, you were averaging about 6.9 with your own, and it, that's mm. come down a little bit. I'd like that to be a little bit lower again. Right. Okay. Ideally, two would probably be where I'd want that to be. Right. But that is where it is, so it is predominantly going to be a, a fade. Okay. Um, and then... That's what you're saying. Yeah, we've, we're working down towards 100 feet. Is that's where what we're, we're trying to get to, yeah. Yeah, dynamic okay. loft down a little bit there as well, 23. So let me flip out the shaft. I'll do a bit more work with this head and then I've got other heads that I can go into basically. Shall I tell you afterwards what I was hope what head I was hoping to go into? Yeah, let me let's yeah. get to the decision. Yeah. Or get to and a decision get... of a couple of heads and then you can tell me if the head's on the counter that you were thinking about. No it was. Okay, next one I'm gonna throw in is Project X, okay. um, the LS, so the low spin version of it, mm -hmm. uh, the 126.0. Okay. Just want to try this just because I know the balance of this is more sort of mid to tip balanced and it's right. uh, as a shaft LS, it's designed to lower Keep spin. Lower. So yeah. combined with this head, it might do a nice job for you. Right. I'm going to try and get it to that D3 swing weight again. Mm -hmm. I have to take a bit of weight off this head. That's a D5 with the current weight on it, and if I just take that the, back uh, off again. The um, tightest balls that we're using, are they the lowest spin ones? The, the standard Pro V, so out of the two models, they're the, the lowest spin. Right, yeah, they okay. do um, the AVX, which is lower launch, lower spin again. Right. They At also do a left way. dash, which is a little bit more niche. Right. Out of the two Pro V models, the, the standard That's one right. is the lower spin, definitely with the irons, yeah. So I, should, I definitely should be, look, as I said before, I'm, I was playing a softer ball, but a, a, a higher spinning ball. Yeah. So like now, I've, I think I really should go in that direction of the lower spinning balls. Yeah, I think based on what I've seen yeah. at the moment, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. something with a pro, like a Pro V, you wouldn't be losing anything around the greens because it's a great still performer. Yeah. It's mainly just with the irons and the woods, they've definitely gone lower okay. on the spin numbers with it. I've, I've, I've noticed, I, I play the Pro V now. I've always wanted to play lower spin balls, so I've always been, traditionally, I was always a Pro V1 X player when it used to be the lowest yeah. spin version. I've played the left dash, I've played the AVX in the winter. Right. I've played the TP5X, I've played Chrome Soft X. So yeah, okay. it's for yeah, me yeah, now that's quite there. a nice quite a nice ball this season that they've got yeah. there, yeah. How come they went to do the change two years ago? So it's because it's, unless you hear of it, I only re heard of it recently on YouTube that they actually changed the the Pro V's, the low spinning, not the X. Yeah. Because they're um, all we've ever known for years is the X. I know. Is the... I don't know. <laughs> 
maybe they were trying to confuse us a little bit yeah, so they brought attention back onto the models i'm not sure but um yeah so the x is, is firmer but yeah. it, it definitely tends to, to spin a bit more with the irons and, and the woods okay. I've, I've noticed anyway Thank okay you. so same head zx7 yeah. prodig dex ls 120 6.0 see what you think of that just slightly different balance here in the shaft that's a nice one. Nice start. Yeah. Like that. All right. Nice and efficient. Good contact. Launch the spin in a nice area. That would start off well. That was just, that was fat. You see a pattern in my first shots are good and then it'll get mm -hmm. worse. I feel more weight with this one, though. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice contact again. Nice strike. Is that how yeah, high I mean, it should I, be? Only you'll be able to tell me, Costas, whether you felt like some of the other swings were just poor swings or not. But yeah, I mean, the, the two that you, the contact's been good, the first one and the last one there, the numbers are... Got exactly the numbers that we wanted. They're really, really nice. So, yeah. But how did that feel, swinging it? You know, no, it, it, it initially, it feels heavier. Yes. Is it, is it heavier than the last no. shaft? No, so or? like I mentioned, the, 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 the actual dead weight of the shaft is the same at 120, right. uh, but the balance of the shaft is more what we call mid to tip balance, so it's closer oh, okay. down towards the head. So it gives you the impression of more weight in the head. Right, okay. So when we're looking at shafts, we've got the dead weight or the, the weight of the shaft, mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the balance point of the shaft. And, and basically, so something can be the same weight as another shaft, but because of the balance, it can feel on the pickup, it can feel heavier. Right, so what okay. we're trying to match as fitters, we're just trying to find the balance of Which weight and, and, and balance. And, um, you know, the, the so balance as well. initially, I like, it feels like, yeah, I can feel the head, but then it, it actually feels a bit more work. Yeah. Yeah, so, I so we've just pushed it that little bit yeah, too far. I think so. I don't know. It's basically what we've done there. So Even though you probably say with the number that you can find on the shots, but... Well, no, but I mean, that, that's the thing that, you see, you know, most people, even if the setup's not quite right, and this is where if you just buy something on the shelf, sometimes you can strike lucky because you can buy something which actually is not a million miles away from where it should be, yeah, and you, you can not. make it work. So if you went in... You hit that a few times in the net and you were swinging really well one day and then you, you, you found a couple of good swings of it. Mm. You could be like, oh, this is perfect. This is you could go away, but technically it's not quite right. It didn't yeah. look quite right in the swing. Yeah. You made it work a couple of times, but a couple of times isn't Just, enough yeah, for me to, yeah, to be exactly. happy to settle on it. So. Mm. Um, yeah. That's the difference, really, when you go and buy a set and you just buy them off the shelf or you hit a few You'll times. hit a few of the couple ones and you hit, oh, that's it. Correct, Done, yeah. Finish. Whereas, actually, when you've got somebody watching you, it just didn't look quite right. It did yeah. look a little bit, a bit too head heavy, that balance heavy there. So I'm going to just yeah. dial it back a little bit. Okay. A six iron is the least club I use on the golf. Six iron? Yeah, because I'm usually driver and 
you need on the Warwickshire you need uh, your hybrid or your five iron next. It's a, a right. second shot or it's then a driver and a wedge or nine. Yeah, I mean, as I say, we yeah. use it because we feel like it gives us the best reflection. It's probably, you know, it's the, a good the, for me the too. Top, the top and the bottom yeah. end. So, but, it, you know, we know, as we know today, if we get you hitting it the, way, the right way, then it should work perfect, with right? else, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Nippon shaft now, modus 120, but I've gone into the X. Okay. Um, again, we just moved the, the balance slightly up the shaft here. It's not quite as tip balance as those Project XLSs. So, see what you think. Again, 120. Uh, it's actually slightly lighter in terms of the, the dead weight, this one. Okay. Uh, let's see what you think. There's that first one again. <laughs> but, <a little> bit, <laughs> but definitely easy. To, let's see the second. <laughs> this feels easier to swing through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, it's just that balance of nicer. dead weight and, and, yeah. and the actual balance of the shaft is just eased off a little bit from the previous mm. one. So. That's the contact that I, I wanted to make sure that heavy strike, I wasn't sure if that was because of the weight of the 130 C tapers or whether that was just a bit of technique, but it's come up with every setup I've given you. So I think it's just something in your technique, technique that, that occasionally creeps in. Right. And that would be where obviously yeah. you could make that improvement on that. I get lazy on my turn or something like that, yeah. As long as you know what you're doing, yeah. with it, right? You know, but it's actually, I would probably put that in the camp of maybe a bit more technique now rather than club okay. per se. It's that one. Come through. But those they do go left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to find strike with those ones. That was a nice good again, Costas. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's the shot we want, mm -hmm. more consistent. That'd be perfect, yeah. yeah. We can bottle that one up and I know. <laughs> repeat time and time again, you'd be happy. Yeah. A little bit. Oh, I did not expect that one to be left. I actually didn't, didn't see that going left. Yeah. It's a really nice contact again. It's just, just mm -hmm. club face was slightly closed down. I definitely like the feel of this shaft. Though. Yeah, I, I think like what's this. really interesting is just keeping an eye on the numbers. The club path and the face to path numbers are a bit more neutral. Oh, okay. So, so it's helping me. Come yeah, up, yeah. So, so I know you've hit one left there, but yeah. But actually, the, the numbers. Um, I mean, the club path was 1.8, oh, so okay. much more neutral. If you remember, we were up at sort of sixes and sevens yeah. with your own setup. So the, 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 of the club is being delivered in a more neutral plane. Yeah. That one there, we just closed the face down, so that's why it's gone left. But these ones here, mm. the face has just been a little bit open, which is that perfect fade pattern, and it's just sort of just faded feeling. back, which is what we want. So right. that one there doesn't bother me because that was just one where the fade, the face has got a little bit closed. Right. But I don't. I think. Over time, using the setup, getting used to it, we'd start to see that sort of combination yeah. a bit more, and that's, that's where good I want to see the, that's yeah, where all the numbers to be. Yeah, definitely. So that's what I'm saying. From a club fitting perspective, you're not always trying to influence club path and face to path mm. directly. You know, in terms of like more a lesson. It, it, yeah, yeah it, you know, it's, it's more coaches. Yeah, um, Stuart and yeah. and the guys who work here. It's more sort of their bag. However, if somebody comes in and the setup is, is quite exaggerated, like I'd say yours is, mm. then we can sometimes see a club path and a face-to-path yeah. relationship improve the benefit of it, yeah. because yeah. of the weight. So mm. that, that's really nice to see from my perspective. It's, it's still a little bit on the shallow side in terms of angle of attack, but again, that's, I think that's yeah. something that you could go away and work on. Yeah. And then you definitely get some, some benefit in terms of strike with that. Okay. I think what happens is sometimes you lose your angles a little bit and that's where the fat strike comes from. Right. So if you just got into leading the shaft a little bit more and compressing it, 
I think that would tidy right. your strike pattern up a little bit as well, and that that okay. would be probably where the next level lies That's where, for you. Because yeah. I just on the golf course, I always throw in that fat one, and it just ruins you. Yeah. yeah. But if I take out there's two in the middle where I just think they were just mm. not your best swings. Mm. So if I take if I take those out of the equation, don't delete them, but just take them out. Mm. What I like to see here is front to back dispersions That's tighter. We still got yeah. a bit of left to right. Mm. Um, again, that one doesn't really concern me so much, but that group in there of the four shots is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. If you could just hit two more for me, then we'll have a set of six and we can have a look at the numbers. <laughs> if I can there. produce the two more. <laughs> I'm trying to find the two more. Okay, so yeah, I mean, again, just just two there where you know we've just haven't quite committed to it, haven't committed mm. to the turn. That one was a little bit low on the face. That one there's a little bit left. But if we look at how the numbers are working out now, give me one. So clubhead speed, pretty much much of a muchness there. Costas 91.3. It's actually gone up, a, gone up a little bit again. Okay. Um, ball speed's the best so far at 126 um so smash factor working up towards that 140 that we were after and then 18 2 and 4 6 188 yards which mm. is pretty much bang up where where you should be on your better strikes okay. um now i know there's a couple of missed strikes there so as an average that would drop down but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm judging it on your best well, swings yeah, to yeah be honest sure. with you, or, or the swings that we want to take out into the golf course right, more okay. often than not um angle of attack um is shallow but um, club path has come down. So again, we started at 6.9, it's now at three. And face to path number was 6.9, and now that's minus 1.6. So it's the first time it's been under the mm. club path by quite some, yeah. uh, quite some Definitely number. Definitely feels so. the nicest, the shaft, anyway. Yeah, like feel. yeah. Dynamic loft in a good area at 21. Peak height's at 111, so it's still a little bit on the high side, but again, with that work in terms of yeah. leaning the shaft and angle of attack more downwards, that would mm. come down, and that's where there is that merriment of technique and, and yeah. equipment, basically, and sure. in the middle is where you're going to play your best golf, basically. Um, but yeah, so best one so far. I feel like it moved the yeah, best definitely. so far when you put your good, yeah, when just you put feels your good nicest, on it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Love, love the, the weight of it and can yeah. feel the, the head. The head, yeah, a bit more feel. And just the head is. is a freer swing and allow them. Probably stop thinking of technique as much and just yeah, allow yeah, it to yeah. go. Yeah, 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 and yeah go sure. That way yeah. As well, yeah. All right, no problem. Got one more I'd like to try with you, but I'll keep okay. this one out because yeah. I mean that's probably visually my favourite as well as the fitter. Got most of your yeah your numbers. Yeah, and I feel like I could probably you do the heads that I want to throw into the equation. I could I could mm. make that if anything we can get even more out of that shaft. I think. Mm -hmm. take up this sport for a hobby then I <laughs> well you know this is what it is but I'm, I'm it's a game so for life isn't it? It. so yeah like, this is why I've come to you guys yeah like, it's just you want to get fitted by the best that way it's it's I think what's nice when you come for a fitting as well is you, you know you're, you're taking care of one of the variables in the equation that's exactly you know it. And, yeah. and and then you can identify really okay well I know there's nothing worse than being out there hitting a shot and you're wondering whether it's could be club, could be exactly yeah. you know because you, you you haven't taken care of one of the variables, you haven't been for a fit, so you just yeah. don't know, you know. Yeah. Once you get that sorted out, and you know, okay, well look, this is how this club performs on my good swings. If you start seeing some other funky stuff, you kind of know it's technique to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, yeah. It and then true. and then that can allow you to go away and work on that mm -hmm. with peace of mind. That's true. Yeah. I know what you mean. We do we do commit an awful lot of time to it. <laughs> Something that can sometimes drive you it doesn't crazy, give back to you, us. You do enjoy it sometimes. Yeah. 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 
But having said that, when you play well, oh, there's nothing, no better feeling. Nothing more fulfilling. So. Yeah. Okay, so again, ZX7. Going into the KBS Tour 120. Mm -hmm. So similar sort of weight to where we've been okay. all throughout the session at 120, but again, I've changed the balance here, going into the KBS Tour. Yeah. Good to go. Good to go. Feels similar to, to that one. To the modus? Yeah. Yeah. That, that kind of feeling. Oh, that was a nice strike. That was a good swing, I like that. Mm -hmm. Felt nice. Lazy. That was a lazy one. I see a couple more with this one, Costas, but what are, what's your thoughts compared to the, the previous shaft, which we liked? Very similar, really, really similar. Mm. Um, not show, seen any, in my field, no difference to that one. Mm. A little bit stiffer, mm -hmm. yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit more feeling. In the modus, yeah. yeah. I don't know where the stiffness is with this, but. Is this stiff or a bit more all the way it, down? It will play a little bit firmer, that. Right. Yeah, it will play a little bit firmer, that one. Typically, yeah. um, the motor series, they're a little bit softer through the midsection, so they give really good feedback. I mean, yeah, that's it's it. a really good feeling shaft. That, yeah, that's um, how it felt. Um, I mean, it, to be honest, if, you were gonna, if we frequencied them out, they'd all be there or thereabouts. Oh, okay. Pretty similar, all these shafts, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. but I'd probably prefer, it just looks like the modus is a little easier for you to square up. Yeah, I think this it just, just feels easier to come through yeah. and swing through. Whereas you can see dispersion this is definitely more, more right hand side with this one. Yeah. So for me, just the modus, the good swings you put on it, it just looked like it was easy and free flowing in terms of to square it up. So I'd probably Stick want to with move that forward yeah. with that, I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem. That, it's not not a million miles away. That's why I left it till last because that's it's pretty similar. You thought they, yeah. but there's, yeah. it definitely, as I said, weight wise it felt, but it just felt stiffer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so we've got some different heads to, to try now as okay. well. Um, I mean, the head that I was going to throw on originally was going to be this one, which is yeah. the Mizuno 225. Yeah. Um, the reason was is because I felt like the loft was probably in the best area for you. Um, it's a little bit bigger yes. top line than what you're using and a little bit bigger top line than what, we, what we've got there in the ZX-7. Okay. That being said, if you really like this, there's no reason why you couldn't play this in a combo set alongside the 223, which is the oh, okay. club that sits below it. Right. Uh, which is a little bit closer to the profile of the, um, yeah, some... of the JPX Tour that you've got there. So, oh, right. you know, what we do find often is, is clients quite like this, maybe for the top end of the bag, four iron, five iron, six iron, maybe right. even seven iron. And then they move into the slightly smaller profile. Small. Feel, bottom, feel, yeah. feel because of the construction of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. But having said that, they, these taper really nicely up and down the set as well. Right, okay. Oh, do they do it themselves? Looking yeah, they, they do, and they yeah. change construction in the in the pitch and wedge 99 area as well. Okay. They get some more of a solid sort of construction like that, so right, they okay. sort of do it themselves, the 225. Right, I say the looks on the rigid, I know you might say the thicker top line, but the looks on the outside look awesome. Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, from all accounts, lovely. if you see it from a distance, it looks like a blade, right? Yeah, so. it looks like a blade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I play blades. Yeah. So I'm just doing, I've, I've just popped a bit of lead tape on there to get to the desired swing weight. Okay. But obviously in the final build, all that would be done in internally oh, okay. um, by the guys to get it to that exact swing weight. And right. then we would progress the swing weight up and down. So typically there should be a bit of a blend, or the way oh, we okay. build there should be a bit of a blend, you know, where the lighter clubs will swing weight a little bit, the, the longer clubs, the four irons will swing weight a little bit lighter. And as you go down the bottom end, it the head weight should be worse, yeah. and therefore it should swing so weight a bit So it all heavier. feels all the same to you, but... Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. Whereas what you find is okay. a lot of the manufacturers tend to sort of flatline their swing weights which is absolutely fine it's, e it's easier to do it that way yeah but actually having now played sets where there's a progression of swing weight i'd always <coughs> prefer it this way so okay. just going to put your tag in for you costas mm -hmm. so mizuno mp225 and then we've got the modus 120x here as well back in okay. i feel like that was the best performance shaft mm -hmm. of the bunch there so these exact same weight as the Strixon? Yeah, I've got, them, I've got them playing yeah. exactly the same in terms of the, mm. the swing weight. Uh, obviously the only difference is different head, different sort of geometry to it. Yeah, like I right. feel the head more. Mm. That feels nice. Yeah. That feels nice. Great shot. Not as good a strike, but mm. why is the first one always good? <laughs> I'm the other way Maybe around. thinking about it less, maybe just moving, yeah. thinking more about club than technique potentially. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, that was more pretty good again. That one, yeah, <sighs> launched a bit, but mm. but because of the great ball speed. Really efficient, so right out the middle of the golf club, that one. Just allow the club to do the work. Come on. Not too bad. Liking this so far, Costas? Yeah, I'm finding strike a bit. Finding strike, I mean, mm. it, it is a slightly more forgiving head okay. than what we've got there in the ZX-7. The ZX-7 is, is more of a rival for the Mizuno 223, which right. is a slightly more compact head. Within the Strixon, they also have the ZX-5, which is okay, probably which is more of a rival for one. the 225, yeah. yeah. Definitely feels nice coming through. Yeah. I just need to control face. See if I can but even even still, I mean, if I let you hit one more, and then we'll compare it to, to kind of what you've come from. But although although they've faded, they're nowhere near. There's nowhere near as much there's fade much on them fade. as yeah dispersion. As and front to back dispersion's really tight as well. Yeah, yeah obviously you've got that one. That was another swing strike. In there, which was just wasn't quite as good, but. 
Go straight, but went right, but went again. Poorly hit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. F I, I like. I don't know. To me, it feels like I can feel the head a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> bit more awareness know, where like, that is. Yeah. I know that's what you're sort of after. Yeah. Uh, go on, hit one more for me with it. Come on, let's see. that one as the last one with it. Ah, oh, it's gone left on me. Yeah. Oh, no. That was the strike I wanted. Yeah. Mm. Good 10 on that one. I like really. the, yeah, strike on that. 10 on that one really strongly there. Mm. Good contender. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how did you, how did it look visually up and down on it? Lovely. Didn't like, mind the top yeah. line so much. No, not at all. I don't think mine's thinner, but it probably is. But yeah. no, it just looks nice. Yeah, something that you could get nothing, used to. Nothing too bulky at all. Yeah. Yeah, so again, if I sort of. Uh, and I just, uh, I love the look of that, is that in the back? Of yeah, it definitely, as I say, it's, got, it's definitely got bag appeal in terms of yeah. visually the way it looks like a blade. They've done a really good job on that. Definitely like the shaft. The shaft's lovely. Yeah, I think like I think watching it go into another head has, has, has supported it for me again. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it moves really nicely for you and you find good numbers with it. Yeah. I'm going to just throw it in. So what we've got here is we've got the red dispersion is the Mizuno that you've just hit. I did take a, a couple of shots out there for mm -hmm. you, which you can see just a couple of the swings out. Yeah. You know, I don't feel like they were reflections of the setup because the other shots were so good. Yeah. So they were the minority rather than the majority. The green dispersion was the same shaft, but in the, um, the ZX7. Mm -hmm. uh, so much of a muchness in terms of the distance there. Yeah. And then the white dispersion is, your, is the, the current setup, basically, right, okay. which, you know, you hit consistently, but, um, but predominantly yeah. out to the right-hand side because right. of the weight and balance of that shaft that you've got in there. So, okay. so I think you can see straight away you would pick up distance. Yeah, and dispersion is. It's, that's is the thing that I I never felt like I wanted for distance, but I'll, I'll, no. I'll take it all day long. Yeah, as long as dispersion can be. Yeah, can come with it. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's pretty much where we are with the first two setups that I've given you there. Um, but I think that's mainly coming down to shaft, a little bit of the head as well, especially in the two two five because it is a more forgiving model. Um, the stronger but, lofted, like you say. Yeah, probably to give you that. Yeah. Exactly. So again, if we look at sort of the table. Um, you know, mm. ticking a lot of the right boxes, dynamic loft at 22, that peak height's still relatively high, but again, mm. we know that will come that with angle of attack. 185, so good for distance, spins down, mm -hmm. launch is sort of stabilized now about around 18 to 19 degrees, and then nice and efficient on the smash factor as well. So okay. you're, you're getting more out of the shaft now, so whereas sure. smash was 1.33 previously, it's yeah. now 1.38, trending you, up you to 140. So. Yeah, that's, so that's good. Okay, okay, so that'll be, an option. One option there. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick between them at the moment, was there any preference between them two? The, Swix and uh, the Mizuno. The Mizuno. Least, yep. Yeah. I'll put them over there. I like when I have hit of, uh, the nice, the feeling of them. Even though I said they're quite soft, the Swix and that was a nice. Soft yeah, yeah, feel yeah. As well. Yeah. I think also if you're used to a an acoustic and a feel of a Mizuno, they're quite hard. Maybe similar, Not yeah, maybe. quite hard to move away from, but yeah. you know, they, they do have a distinct sort of feel and acoustic to yeah, them. Yeah, maybe. All right, this is a new boy on the block. Uh, it's a Tatlist T150. Yeah, yeah, that looks nice. They do do a 200 model as well, but I just felt like maybe the slightly more compact look of the 150 might be suited to your eye. Yeah, it looks lovely. So uh, This hasn't been on the rack all that long, but it has been a really good performer for us okay. so far. Oh, that feels soft. Nice start. That felt, felt nice and soft. Yeah. Great set of numbers there, cost us again. 140 smash, 18.7 on the launch, 5,000 okay. 5, on the spin, sorry. Good. Bit more down that one actually. Not quite middle, but yeah. still good enough. Oh, a bit high. That's a nice. Bit toey again. That's good to see, though, because that's to, yeah. probably your predominant um, miss, miss is, yeah. a, is a little bit toe, right? Yeah. And that's performed really strongly there. that's still there performed really nice, yeah. good ball speed at 121. 
um, and actually it's given it relatively good flight there at 19.5 and 4.9 on the spin. It, it's kept it in the air long oh, okay. enough to get to 177. So yes, you would take that as a miss yeah. like all day, you know. That was longer than my longest race. Yeah. Like mine. Yeah. Like Jenny get. See if we can miss it. So obviously you, you get an element of forgiveness through the shaft as well. Okay. So whereas your shaft would have felt a bit heavy, a little mm. bit hard work, and you combine that with a head which is a little bit more compact and potentially a little bit more challenging, and all of a sudden you've got a setup which can feel pretty unforgiving. If you get the shaft weight and, and the profile right in the shaft, and then you've got a head which is giving you a bit of help, all of a sudden you can gain from both of them together. Yeah, sure. nice it feels so soft like yeah a lovely that's a great shot there it's, it's almost gone a little bit too far, it's gone too far. <laughs> but it was absolutely smashed i mean again nice whether, it, whether it's confidence or whether it's getting used to the shaft now but you've picked up a bit of club head speed back up there again that's one of your quickest swings of the day that one okay but but it you know it's if i put that into the normalizer as you can see it process, it's pretty much where you should be Right, it should so be that way. That, okay. You're not used to seeing that, so you're going, oh, yeah. it's gone a long way, that. But, but actually, because you've got such good speed, tall-like speed, it, it's where you should be, you know. Okay, so, so I've got to strike you like that, yeah. Try well, what and I'm saying that is, you know, way, yeah. You, you actually, they you, never gave me a chance to a, get there. Correct, you're leaving yeah. a little bit on the, on the table with your current setup, whereas right. these are now, you, you're able to express your speed a bit more, and this is pretty much getting you to where you should be, you know. Oh, okay. Hmm. They look, are they, are they smaller that way, these ones, than the... Mizuno's? Heel to toe? Yeah. Yeah, they're a bit more compact, yeah. Yeah, they look that way, but it's nice. I mean, as, as far as a combination goes, head and shaft, it, it times really nicely for you. Yeah. You know, I think, there's, I think there's so much potential in that setup for you there. Yeah, without um, doubt. You know, they, they look awesome. Yeah, yeah. they're tightless and done a really good job on them. Um, yeah. T one hundred, T one hundred S. The previous models, we had yeah. great success with. Um, I think what they've done is they've just tried to split the setups a little bit more now, so they're a bit more distinct who they're sort of aimed at. Right. Um, T one hundred is a little bit more compact than that, a little bit higher lofted. Um, okay. One hundred and fifty, I think, is going to be really popular. I think. So did they year. have a bit more. Um, for bit more help than my one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The JPX Tour, yeah, you, you yeah. a bit more forgiveness in that head, just okay. in terms of the construction of it, and it, it definitely size-wise, if you've got your six iron. I'd say so. You just look at those sort of side by oh. side. Slightly wider, slightly wider. deeper, a little bit more behind the ball in terms of How where the CG placement is. Right, okay. And then in terms of if you look down on that, top line wise as well mm. there's not much in it but it, there's enough i think because i've gone from the mizuno i said oh it's smaller but it's actually bigger than my yeah my one at the moment isn't it yeah yeah so, and i thought oh these are small but they're actually yeah mine are smaller yeah yeah mm. cool all know. right all perfect good. well i like where they are yeah i mean bear, bear in mind these are some of your miss strikes here and they're still <laughs> yeah, they're, you know they're pretty they're much they're on the front of the green yeah and again watching you move into that shaft for a third time, dispersion's definitely better now. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think the exciting thing about these shots up here is they are potentially where you could, mm. where you could live. That's where I should, yeah, I've got to find my consistency. Yeah. So I mean, try and play a bit more golf, get the lessons and... Yeah, well, we, we get asked quite a lot, you know, should I go for a bunch of lessons before coming for the fit? And it's this chicken and egg situation. But I mean, ultimately, you need a you need a setup that moves nicely with you and times yeah. well to then go and to work with to, the pro. Yeah, the pro is there to focus mainly on swing mechanics. Okay. Um, not all pros are versed with club fitting. Some are, some aren't. So therefore, some of them wouldn't necessarily know whether the club is influencing the numbers. Now, for right. example, you know, again, if we look at the numbers here, 
I mean, look at the difference there, 4.8 minus 2.8. So that, that's a great combination of numbers now. That's right, it should be. But it looks quite dramatically different to 6.9 and 6.9. Yeah. And we haven't done any we haven't done any technical work here. I haven't right. mentioned technique to you at yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. just been hitting balls. Yeah. But you've become more neutral purely From by the club setting. Finding the right shaft that suits my yeah. swing. So I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, there'd be an argument for come and get club fit first and then you take that and then you go away and yeah. you work with your pro, you know. That's yeah. Definitely seems a route I'm going down, yeah. Because then it's like you said, confidence that I know I've got the tools now and uh, with the that are correct for me. Yeah, and it's for me working on it from there. And and it can even be, you know, for higher handicap guys, it can even be basics like club length. Yeah, that uh, could really loft lie. Mm. The really basic stuff, you know, just get that in the right place before you don't have to necessarily go through a whole new mm. setup or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, as long as you know whether you've got the right length in in hand mm. and then loft and lie and all the rest of it, that could make a big issue for the that strike. Can, that yeah. can really help as well, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, tailor made P seven seventy. Yes. Didn't go 790 because I think that would be a little bit too strong. Okay. And after you've made your changes to technique, I think flight on spin could be almost too hot. Oh, okay. Um, so I feel like the 770, you're the kind of golfer that 770 is, uh, is aimed at. Okay. And visually looking at the top line as well, it's a bit more compact. Yeah. Definitely thicker. Nice. Nice start. Yeah. <laughs> Said that a few times. <laughs> that feels nice and easy to go through. Very nice as well. Yeah. Sorry. Don't know what distance did that go? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, that was just a heavy yeah. one. Yeah. That's the one that you get occasionally. We just don't quite commit to the to the rotation yeah. and you bottom out early. But we know what that one is. That's mm. fine. That's a nice strike. Um, what I'm liking, Cos, is with the shaft, we're starting to see more of that strike yeah, than definitely. we are anything else, right? We, yeah, definitely. You know, the, it just look, feels so good with the, yeah, yeah, compared yeah, to mine. It's definitely in a better place for you now. Mm. I'm quite happy with that. Another, another. I mean, there's no bad heads in this part of the market. There isn't any yeah. bad heads in the market anymore. Everybody yeah. has great, great gear. Yeah. Um, again, just construction-wise, it's it's basically a dial-back version of the really popular P790, which yeah. we still sell a tons That's of. Nice. Yeah. Um, the 790 is a more powerful construction than okay. this in terms of it's a bit stronger lofted. Right. It's designed at the guy who's really looking to add distance to the game, but is maybe making their first venture into a, a forged, more compact head. 770 slightly softer in spec in terms of loft and construction. Okay. Aimed more at the guy who's looking at ZX7, T150s, right. 223, 225, that sort of combination. Are they all same, pretty much loft? Uh, the ones that I've yeah, yeah. Much of them, much they have su subtle differences, yeah. and loft will be something that we'll, we'll dial in as well based on whatever head we settle on. We'll, we'll okay. decide what loft we need to get to. Because these heads are predominantly forged, you can manipulate them. Yeah. Whether that be add or subtract the degree of loft one way to get to get it absolutely perfect. Okay. And again, that's something that we're able to do in house, so we sort of specialise in that. Okay. Um, trying to think on the difference. I think tightness was softer, but mm -hmm. this is just as soft. Mm -hmm. um, you can see a bit of a thicker top edge to it. Thicker yep. top head, but it feels like this has got more help. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like behind More forgiving, or, you mean? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, I found strike. But I did like how I found strike with the tight list, but I, I think mm -hmm. these are 
Uh, what are the numbers on these one? Yeah, so I mean, if I take off that one swing, mm. I mean, all of a sudden, look at that for a dispersion. You know, now we're, yeah, together, like. now we're starting to see some, some tighter numbers, you know, mm -hmm. that's great. Still playing that fade shape, which I'm not, we're not looking to change that today. I'm mm. just looking to give you something that time is better. So, you know, that, that, that looks really promising right I'm there. I'm happy to play that shot more often. Yeah, yeah, as long as it comes. And then from a numbers perspective, that's where we are. So 91.8 on the club head speed, 125. So we've sort of stabilised now that 125, as you can see with the last couple of setups. Mm. Um, smash factor marginally down a little bit. Right. Okay. Um, just over the course of the different shots. Yeah. Um, so we might have just hit a couple um, of sweeter shots with the with the two two five potentially, mm. but then also the spin is down a fraction, which makes it seem more efficient. Mm. But you're talking about a couple of yards between the setups. Oh, okay. so there's not, yeah, there's yeah. not a huge amount in there. Mm -hmm. Angle of attack is stabilised slightly on the shallower side, although mm. it was a little bit more down with the tight list. I haven't really got a, an explanation for that. <laughs> well, that would just, just a little bit more. It's only half a degree more down. Yeah. But definitely a little bit shallower. Mm -hmm. So though we've neutralised the path a little bit, we've also become a little bit shallower with the angle of attack, so that'd be something for you to work on. Mm -hmm. Club path again is neutralised now. It's pretty similar with all three setups. Um, the face on the 225 and the uh, T150s, you find it a bit easier to square them up, so mm. dispersion was a, a, little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit straighter. Peak height 114, 115, 115. So this is where we, this is why we place so much emphasis on the shaft, because once we get the shaft timing the way we want it, actually the heads. Once you get the heads, you see how similar of, the heads are. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, there are subtle differences. Don't get me wrong, as you're mm. picking up on, you picked up rightly the way you described the tailor made. But mm. there's more in the, there's more in the shaft. For, yeah. for, for me personally, yeah. you know, once oh, now definitely. that I've got that time in the right way, we're starting to find that strike. Yeah. Um, their heads want to get them lofted the same way and because we're in very similar models here so the centre of gravity placement will be the same you're starting to see very similar numbers now oh, you know okay. so it, a little bit of it now comes down to visuals what acoustic feel? feel off the face okay um, where you'd go down that path with it basically so I definitely I'd put them to the Mizuno and the um, tight list yeah. ahead of this one but then yeah do what am I going to get the same forgiveness. I, I, hit, I hit this nice as well, but I think mm -hmm. it, I think I think it's them two, and then I would probably say, oh, uh, visually, even though how much I love the Mizuno, mm. I think I, the Titleist will look awesome as well. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I've got one more head to try, which is okay. the Mizuno Two T Three. Right. I want to throw that on because technically that sits in between. I would say them two. Yeah, the T One Fifty oh, right, okay. and, and the Two T Five in terms of it's more of a solid forge construction. Mm -hmm. Bit like the tight list, um, yeah, and, and, and top line wise. So it'd be interesting to see what you think of that. Yeah, I think you hit, you hit the tailor made good. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that's what you say but, shaft, wouldn't you? But, <laughs> it, you, but it, it, when you hit it, you know, Costas, there's one, there's, there's a couple there that you're picking those because there's something. There was about that, that them, right? sound, that feel that yeah. it was just lovely. But yeah, I don't think you quite get with the tailor made. With the tailor made, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Know where you're coming from with that? Yeah. How did you come across Precision? Uh, literally Google fitted uh, wherever I can get fitted uh, near me. Yeah. And um, you were the most, because you, it seems like you, because of your name. It, uh, when I watched a few YouTube videos. Okay, yeah. Um, just seeing how you're doing with weights and all this kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of fitters. Yeah. And not so many near me in Midlands, yep. but there still is, but not with the same precision that you guys are doing it with. Yep. So, so I thought I want to come and if I'm going to make the investment and do that way, I want to do it the right way and come to you guys. That yeah, way. cool, great. That was good to hear. All right, so we've got Mizuno 2T3 here. See what you think of this one. Definitely this shaft works with me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's um, what I said, you know, 
when you start swapping it into multiple heads and you start seeing the same data all the time, then you know you've absolutely yeah, hit the nail on the, on the head. Yeah. It looked like it moved well first time on the Srixen, but I did feel like we'd get more out of it with a different head on it as yeah. well. So it's, it's not the same, that. nowhere near the Srixen feel compared to these heads. Yeah, that I've yeah. Had. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm trying to understand feel where. Good. Good to go. Yeah. Can't complain about those three so far, Costas. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Out of the circle. That left one. Saw well, that the fit is cursed. Haven't yeah, that one actually was. <laughs> This would be an interesting one because that sounded slightly low on the head. Mm. I'd see if it could, yeah, so they're not lost. Mm. So much. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That's a good one. Where with so my I, I, club, I, it probably would have been 160 yeah, or I think, somewhere. Yeah, I think if I <coughs> just throw your original setup there, I, mm. I feel like that strike you've just hit there would have been one of these two. Well, probably that one, where yeah, it's a little sure. bit low on the head. It, it, it would have spun up quite a lot. So potentially could have lost 10 yards rather than the eight yards, yeah. Yeah, Where so I, I, feel like, I feel like it, that would have been one of the ones that finished here, yeah. because it wasn't quite squared up. It was a little bit low on the face, which generally produces a bit more spin. Squared it up. Whereas just with the, sh with the combination of the shaft and the head, that's yeah. just controlling that a little bit more. And mm -hmm. to get that sort of performance out of it, I think it is, is great, you know. I mean, that one there was just one of those swings. Uh, softness, yeah, feels similar to mine, soft like that. I still think the tight lease is yep. softer, yep. I would say, um, yep. which I like. Um, what I would say, even though look on me looking on the back as well, I prefer the look of the 225. Yeah, okay. The, the, the flushness, the rather, at least I don't like this thing yeah, that yeah, they've yeah. done on it. I, I think, I think now there's, could work there's, for there's, there's no, you know, between <coughs> the two of them, um, slightly softer in loft, slightly softer in construction, so um, potentially a bit more feedback from that head, but I would expect the launch and the spin to be up a little bit, which is, which is what it is. Mm -hmm. But because I've got it swing weighted and, and, and set up the right the same way, yeah. it times just as well as the 225 does. Right, okay. 225, definitely a little bit more forgiving, particularly out of the toe because of the construction of the head in terms of where the weighting is. Okay. So if your strike does wander into the toe, which it does occasionally, mm. I think you're going to get a bit more performance out of the 225 head. Like I mentioned, the, the beauty <coughs> with all these heads nowadays is you can blend them, so you can play combo sets. Okay. So even if you did so want to play the 2 2 3 at the bottom end, you could do that in an 8 i 9 9 pitching wedge. Yeah. However, they have done a good job <coughs> on the 2 2 5 in terms of up and down the set, and right. same same with the T-150s as oh, well. Okay. They look really good from 4 iron down to wedge. So Are they really? Yeah. What, what's their next one? Two, so, they've got two, a, so they've got a T200, which sits yeah. above, which is probably closer to the spec of the 225. Right. And then they've got the T100, which is probably, would technically sit be between um, the Mizuno 221, which is the blade, and the oh, 223, okay. which is what you've so got So they've both hands. got the option, so yeah. yeah T100's a little bit more compact, right. which I, I don't think we need to go there with you. I'd prefer to keep the loft a little bit stronger in the 150. I think that's plenty of yeah. what I see yeah. size and yeah. yeah. I think that looks small to me anyway, and I didn't realise it's actually a bit bigger than what I've got at the moment. Yeah, T T100 yeah. probably closer to the to the size of the J oh, okay. Yeah, which I don't need to be at. Yeah, I don't think. Well, yeah. I, you know, I want that bit more forgiveness, like you say. Uh, sure, I mean, you know, yeah, we've way. got we've we've had you know <coughs> several pros come through here, and one notable is you know Carl Montgomery. Yeah. who's you know a friend of the company and oh, okay you know whenever you talk to him you know arguably one of the best iron players of his generation certainly through the 90s and into the 2000s you know yeah. and was always pin high was a great iron player but always played relatively big head you know played big berthers oh, did he? stuff Ooh, like that oh, and even okay. nowadays he likes irons with a bit more offset to them oh, right. but if you ever asked colin you know why he played those heads he said why well, would it make it any more difficult for myself um you know it's that and, point and, and it's that, that, exactly you know, that isn't it 
Why would you, you want to hit Blade when... Th there's a yeah. couple of guys on, on tour still playing Blade, but actually yeah, they're, they're sort of more now in the minority than the majority. You, you see more of this sort of muscle, as I call a muscle cavity, yeah, um, yeah. which is sort of T100, 223, yeah. even T150s. You know, T150s. You used to have guys on tour playing the old a Tactless AP2s. Yeah. Um, they had such a good name, the AP2s. Yeah, <coughs> AP2s, a lot of you, you know, you've got people like, you know, Brooks Nis Kepka, Shane Lowry playing... ZX7s, right, so... Okay. Um, they, yeah. they even they want the help and they're pros, yeah. Absolutely, why would you not? Yeah, exactly. Nice. Okay. Not okay. bad, but tell you what, it was really well struck. Mm -hmm. Strike was nice. Uh, as in, I'm not... Oh, I'm, I say the curse. I'm, not, I'm striking a lot more. I would yeah. say I, I, with all of them. Yeah, yeah. up to eight. It's Contact still a odd bad one, but yeah. Yeah. Well, so where's right. your head at, Costas, in terms of the free heads that we've hit there now? I think uh, fair to say with that we've probably taken out the ZX7s and yeah. the and Take the P7 seven seventies. Yeah. Yeah. So and that leaves us with Mizuno two two five. Yeah. Titleist T one fifties and and, and the and two these. two two threes. Which I'm just I don't know what it is. I. I I think the tight list is where I'm at, but I know how yeah. nice off this. Why don't we Why don't we throw them back on again? Okay. We'll, we'll hit them both a few more times, just as you say. Not pushing for a decision just like that. I think we hit them again. Yeah. I think second time round, you'll 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 know, you know in your head which one okay. where you want to go with it. Definitely. Yeah. I'll just label this some lab label these ones up by head so we'll use them as a slightly different set. Okay. Alright. Good to go. Okay. Again, that's an interesting one because it was low on the head. Yeah. But it can't give me as much. What? Not bad. Yeah, for a miss strike. Like yeah. <laughs> Even though how much I love the back of this, I don't know, it, it just it looks a bit bigger to me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the I know it's going to give me the forgiveness mm. that I want. I think I've still got that shot. That's the difference with this one. Yeah. But I think the other two, not so much forgiveness mm -hmm. as this one. The, yeah, I'd the probably say... 223 or the 150. Well, it's certainly 223. I think the 150 gives it a good a run for its up. money. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, technically, the, probably the T200 would be the direct rival to this, but right. um, I think they've done a great job on the T150s this year. Okay. Nice strike. Lovely. The problem with this one is I love the look at the back of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a and you know that, that's something that, as a fitter, you, I can't put a score on the um, visuals for, yeah. for a golfer. You've got to enjoy the, the gear that you play. Um, you've got to like it down by the ball. You've got to like the feel of it. You know, mm. you, we can talk numbers all day, but you've got to, you've still got to go out and play golf with it. Sure. Um, so you've still got to enjoy how it looks and feels. Yeah. Shot one and see. See, Absolutely. it is. It, it, I think in my mind on the course, I hit straight, but it is a fade. That's the mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. that yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's performing exactly how it should do. Your mm. mechanics, you know. Yeah. The club path's been very Swim. consistent all all throughout the session. It's been left, and then and the it's shaft. Just about shaft feel. It's so much more feel. Yeah. With this shaft. Yeah. Well, I, I mean. I mentioned where I wanted the numbers to be at the start of the session. That is pretty much. That's, that's what you it. Want to <laughs> so you know, I'm, pr I'm You're happy, happy with, with your job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, I'd like the I'd like the launch and the the height to be down a little yeah. bit, but 
it's just Again, my technique. we know exactly where that's going to come from. So oh. that's nice for you to be able to walk out the door and know, okay, well, I just need to go away and work on, on that, Hitting a bit lean on. in the shaft a little bit, and that'll give you that, the ability to be able to alter your flight up and down then as well. That was me trying to do something different. All right. Take him out. Let's go one more with that, and then yeah. we'll throw the uh, the tightest head on there for you. A little bit, yeah, a little bit heavy as well. Not, not quite, yeah. Okay, okay, and then let me throw the tight list on there because we, we've got a good mixture in there. We've in, hit three yeah. absolute blinders and then we've hit a couple of heavy ones. Yeah. So, that, I mean, it just shows that you can still... That's you why know. I'm the handicap that I'm at. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's, Correct, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. That's why. And that's what I say. I think people, when they come in, they feel like they've got to, you know, they get a bit nervous about hitting every single shot perfect. Well, I'm fully aware that you're a handicap yeah. golfer. And, yeah. You know, the, the, the best players in the world... Their, their clubs are fitted to the nth degree. You know, every single day they're tweaking with their golf clubs, and they still hit it off the planet. So yeah. it's just the it nature happen. of the game. It's but the what we're looking for from a fitting perspective is when you put your best swing on it, do you get your best numbers? Right and it felt like you were putting pretty good swings on it with your set, and mm. the numbers were still a bit suboptimal. There's so no way I would have got to those no, numbers. No, no. Whereas Mike. now we're starting to see it. So yeah. we're not. When you do a fitting, I'm not looking for perfect. I'm looking. We're looking yeah. for, the, for an improvement, and I'm looking to make it easier, you know. Make it easier, yeah. <laughs> Definitely Feel find this head a bit easier to square up in terms of, like, you, yeah. you can hit that shot with it. Yeah, and it feels so Which soft. Which isn't a bad thing, because I feel like you can dial it back a little bit from there, but yeah. it's such a strong flight. Oh, it was the first shot, so don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's... Come on. Two in a row. Oh, a bit of fat, but still straight up. Not too heavy. <laughs> Massively bad, though. 167. Is it? Is there any... Obviously, they, they weigh the same. They every, Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I've, yeah everything. I've, I've put a little bit of lead tape onto the back of the 225 to get it swinging at D3. This one... The mm. headweights of the tightest tend to be a little bit heavier anyway, so this meets the weight I want automatically. That's going to be a little bit, ah, uh, a bit too much. There's always mm. subtle differences between one head swings on a shaft compared to another right. because of the geometry of, of the head. Yeah. And that's why I feel it's always it's best to go somewhere where you can test Every everything. single head on a, on a shaft. So get the shaft right in terms of you identify balance yeah. and weight and why that time's right. And then you're just trying to match it up with the correct head for the for the goal for them. Good. That was a nice one. Just feels so much soft. There's a lovely feeling club. Yeah. Nice data again there. Mm. Too high. <laughs> I think what, what's interesting. I know you hit you hit a couple of mm. wayward ones with the Mizuno as well, but I think what, what's interesting here is this is starting to show that maybe it's not quite as forgiving. As a as 225. A, as, as the 225. And so there's a bit of a drop off when you yeah. don't quite get it right. It's mm. whereas Even though I've, the Mizuno gives me, yeah, the all round yeah. package, I think. I think um, to, to summarize it for me, I think what the way I would describe it is I think the 225 is perfect for you right now. And I think it'll be, it'll be relevant for you moving forward as well. 
I think the two, uh, sorry, the the T100 that you've got, the T150, sorry, I should say, is a club that you'll appreciate more as your game improves over the next 18 to 24 months. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's got a, a bit more. Allows to forward into it. And I uh, think yeah. so. Yeah, you know, I think it, you, you would you would find it a little bit more challenging right now, but I think in in a year, two years time, you'd be in love with it because yeah, you'd, yeah. you'd love the feel of it and the additional yeah. feedback that it offers. And I think that's pretty much. I, I for it. me. Uh, feeling wise I think this feels softer than, than that uh, yeah. and even the 223 yeah. uh, I love the feel when I hit nice ones on it. Yeah. it yeah it's a little bit smaller but I should get around that because it's it's bigger than actually the ones I was hitting now yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's just they look bigger yeah I'll let you hit a few more with it and then yeah. you, you can we can just summarize and you can see mm. what, which one you want to go with It was lovely. Oh, lost it. But was the Mizuno a bit tighter? Oh. It's like I really want to choose this one, but I'm actually thinking. <laughs> I'll let you hit w one more with this one, Costa. Can't have you finish on that. Oh, no. Thinny, but still better. Not bad. Yeah, definitely a little bit wider spread mm. there with the T 150s second time. Second yeah. time, I could be a little bit fatigued at the end of the session as yeah, well. But, but w where, where's your sort of head at with it? I mean, we know numbers wise when you get it right with both of them, they're very, very mm. similar. Same even with the other heads that we've got here. That's so, numbers wise, we can we know that we've, we're in the right area when you get it yeah. right. I think it now comes down to right. feel, visual, acoustic. It's, what you want to go out and play that you know yeah, twice yeah. a week when you get out on the golf course which yeah. ones do you want to be pulling out of the bag i think it'll be these ones the 150s yeah, yeah. I, I think you know I, you're definitely good enough striker to play them um, they're going to be a bit, little bit more challenging to start with mm. but i think as you go away and you improve on your technique then you'll really appreciate that yeah. head as well that's the way to go yeah i, th I think that's why i've got to look to get better and they'll come with me so i won't need to yeah. uh, go again. yeah, yeah. I, I, I always like fitting clubs you know, mm. ahead of people that allows them to grow into them. Because um, otherwise you can get a year down the line, two years down the line, if you're really committed to your game and all of a sudden you're in something which you, you need to, you need to, yeah, you know, without a doubt. you want to go into something else again, right? So yeah, yeah, of something course. like that, it's a, it's a quality head. I mean, you could play that for I, it, five, six, seven years. And I think it's good enough for, for now and yeah. it has progression for later, but yeah. they look awesome. They yeah. do look awesome. And they, they feel soft. Yeah, a lovely feel too. Yeah, he's doing a really good job on them this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. We're just going to hit a couple just to get the line angle spot okay. on. I don't think it's going to be a million miles from what it is, which is standard at the moment, but mm -hmm. we're just going to hit a couple with the with the chalk right. line just to absolutely sure. identify that. So I'll mark the balls up and we'll just hit them as normal. Oh, okay. We find this is a better way to identify lie than oh, okay. the boards. Oh, yeah, sure. The boards that can... The boards, you, you, the people tend to... Hit, hit down on them slightly differently. The ball raises as, as you hit it as well, so it gives you a, a slightly false reading. Oh, okay. So um, we use short lines here, which leave the mark on the face mm -hmm. and allows us to identify whether the club needs to be more upright or flatter. But I don't think it's going to be a million miles away because when mm -hmm. you got it right with this setup, the ball flat's it's pretty neutral with it. So. Yeah. that one on the face bit thin yeah, yeah. a little bit low yeah but pretty solid performer oh yeah middle ish yeah. Yeah. Are you looking at if the if the line's straight? 
Yeah, I want it to be yeah. straight up and down the face, pretty much. Obviously, I want it to be out the middle as well. <laughs> yeah, but they are straight, yeah. <clears throat> I haven't middled it yet. Oh, Terry, badly too. It's yeah. a little look, so yeah, you can sort of see straight toey and high toe. Just a couple of swings at the end of the yeah. session, but um, the, the line is pretty much saying sitting straight up the face. That's telling totally me that they're, they're all good at standard. They're, they're pretty yeah. good where they are, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on standard. So yeah. I'll show you what the specs of these heads are. Okay, so we can go through it together. So T150, so you've got your, your base loft there is, is 28, uh, which mm -hmm. I think I'd be inclined to just keep as, as is. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a little bit stronger than what you've come from, but I think the combination of the shaft and the head's done a good job for you. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of lie angle, 62.5, and we keep the standard length, yeah. yeah, 37 and a half inches. So I think I'd be inclined to keep the as is. Not doesn't always work out that way, but I think yeah. for you, that's where we keep them. Okay. And then that allows you, as you're, um, technique becomes more neutral as well then also you'll you'll grow into that setup a bit better for you mm -hmm. and then just in terms of swing weight they've come out bang on d3 so right. we would we would build into d3 as well for right you. okay um okay perfect awesome. spot yeah. on we're going to cover wedges we'll cover grips at the end mm -hmm. as well for you grip size grip type okay in terms of wedges then so this is what you've got at the moment the tailor made mm. talk me through sort of what you've what you've got, 50, 54, 56? That's 56 is because it, I was high to 50 before 50. Um, was I 50? Was I? Basically, I had the high toe wedges mm -hmm. all set. And then I, I recently I bought them too in the last six months. Yeah. Because I love the feel of them. But uh, And then I've just put that in just in case, I don't know, in a bunker maybe. I, I no reason why to yeah. have that when you. I, I basically use the 50 and the 54 is what I use all the time. Okay. And, and how have you sort of found that then in terms of the... Um, generally, I like my 50 full shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like the... I chose the tailor maze because I could feel the weight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that Dynamic Gold S200's in there. So again, mm. traditionally sort of is more tip balanced. Yeah. S200, a little bit softer. So good good wedge shafts because they're a little bit soft in the tip section basically than oh, okay. S300 right. or X100 for example so they, they make good wedge shafts typically but balance point um, not quite as heavy as your 130s there but they're a little bit more tip balance so right. I think that's definitely what we've tapped into today yeah um, so are, are you looking to, to to stay with these or are you looking to, to change them or are you looking to potentially reshaft based on what we found today what what how would you like me to Gender to go with the wedges um, uh, with wedges, I wasn't really, uh, it's all, it was all irons. All irons, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. looking. And it's whether, my actual question whether to do wedges is to, should I be a f my four hybrid or am I, am I getting a four iron? Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in that. Is, is, well, I don't know if that's what uh, yeah, you guys well, do. I, mean, or, in I, I don't mind if you'd not look at wedges now. And no. Look, that's what I'm more happy, interested in. Happy to play it however, however you want to do it, Costas. Yeah. I mean, what, what, anything I probably down. would say is, to have 54 as your most lofted wedge is, is relatively low. Yeah. So I can I see why you can see that why you've dropped that in. And I think 58 would be the way forward. Yeah. yeah. If, if you like these two, then to, to invest in I know the four, the, the, four, the four out, haven't they? The MG4. Yeah, they have. You, <laughs> potentially, you might be able to get hold of a of a of a mill grind free though. Um, off yeah. Of, off of, because it's a standard spec that right. So yeah, yeah. If you're happy with those at the moment and mm. you want to progress with those, great. If you if you want your um, investment to go into the irons, then fantastic. We've yeah. done that today. In terms of the four iron question, you can definitely play a four iron. You've got enough speed and you've got enough flight to play okay. a four iron. So um, from a versatility perspective, um, the hybrids typically launch it, spin it a bit more, slightly better out of sort of semi-rough, they're a bit more forgiving. Four mm. irons can be more versatile, you know, hit them off the tee, flatten the flight out. I'm liking an option off the tee when I think, right, I'm not hitting driver. I don't want to, maybe my three, I, I love hitting a three wood, but 
it might be a bit too long, so I need something. And I only had a five eye. I've got it to mm -hmm. five. So, so you've got the four hybrid in there at the moment, right? Uh, the yeah, 21. I've got the twenty, and it started off when I first got it, brilliant. And now, I, I don't know. It was a, a video I listened to Simon. He was saying, "Yeah, I, I think I'm a swooper." Mm. And I've even tried to really, mm. even more the technique of hitting it, and now mm. I'm topping it and not hitting it very well at right. all. Uh, yeah. Should I be hitting more down like an yeah, iron? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to treat hybrids like like long irons. Yeah. You know, for me, it's a it's a direct long iron replacement, so that's how I like to treat it. So to be honest with you, I, w I want the dynamics to be pretty similar to to what I'm doing with a four iron. Right. Then purely just based on the spec of the four hybrid, it's going to perform slightly different in terms of launch and spin. Go but actually, well. I, I do want to treat it a bit more like, a, like a long iron. And that's what I mean, whether with the iron, my, should I be ordering? That's my decision, which one's... But I know like a, a hybrid's going to give me the option in the rough where mm. I'm not going to hit the four iron. Right no. In the rough, I'm going to hit the hybrid. You've got two options here. I don't <coughs> think you can go wrong with ordering four iron to pitch because in oh. years to come, even if you wanted to sell them on, you would potentially you would sell four to pitch as a seven piece set. However, mm. you've also got the other option with us where you could order five to pitch and wedge, go out, play with them. And if you absolutely fall in love with it and you hit the five iron really well, then you can order the four iron the retrospectively four iron as, well. as an individual club. You could do that and we can build it to the same spec because we have the ability, the ability to do that here. So you, yeah. you've, got, you've got two options there. Yeah. Uh, you could just go with the five iron for now and then if you absolutely love it, then you if might you just can. be like, do you know what? Just do me a four iron, guys. Do it. Or you, you might, as you've correctly said, you might mm. get more use out of the four hybrid because of the semi-rough scenario. There is you might just choose it to keep it in, but you, yeah. But I, I do like it after the tea rig, thinking I, I've just been hitting my five iron. Uh, some court, I think, right, I want to be in play. Yeah. I don't need the distance. And all. Yeah. I, I'll hit a five. Yeah. And that's where I'd hit a four. Well, why, like, why, why, I, don't I, why don't I price you up four to pitch? Okay. Um, and then you can let me know what you want to do with it because then you'll have your you'll have your quote there and then you yeah, can yeah. let me know how you want to play that. So go that way. Okay. Perfect. Last bit to touch on, but then mm. would be grip size, grip type. So what size glove do you wear? Medium. Medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if you just grip that for me, let's talk you through kind of what we're looking for here. So basically, as you sort of apply your normal pressure, fingertips should just be touching that fleshy part of the palm. Mm -hmm. If it's digging in too much, then it means it's too small, and if you can't touch it, it means it's obviously too big and then you have to apply too much pressure through those last three fingers so yeah, typically just, mid you're probably looking for maybe one maybe two additional layers one on layer top. i think it is i don't like it too too thick yeah yeah so i'd probably say yeah we can mm. probably go to to one additional layer so it'd be two layers that mm -hmm. basically would be where it is so that's yeah a little bit thicker to handle the the medium glove size but it's not overcooked okay and then in terms of grip type we've got plenty of <laughs> options as you can see over we here gonna. if you want to follow me over to the grip okay. wall we'll have a little no we'll have a little look. Um, I mean, we've been using Tall Velvet 360s today, which is this. Mm -hmm. You've got your black version and you've got your white um, infill version there. Probably the oh, most yeah. used grip on the market just because um, yeah, you always see perform that. well across all the different conditions, you know, hot and humid or cold. I was, and I'm all in, this is what I've got on at the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. So I love the. I love that stickiness. Yeah, 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 too. yeah, yeah. Got a, um, got a bit of traction to them, the sonars yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm not into these ones. Yeah, the well, lampkins, the, yeah. yeah. Or the cords. The cord. Yeah. Yeah. Too uh, coarse. It, it becomes all one and yeah. no grip. Yeah. Um, but then the ones we were using uh, are. Okay, mine is a bit, that's a bit stickier. Yeah. It? I mean, if you've used these and you yeah. like them, then we could just go with the lampkins so yeah. nice for you. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think if, that'd if be the best. I've used them way. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've used the same grip for years. Mm. Now, so I'm used to them. I like. I do like them. Yeah, they're, they're definitely they, they tick that box. They are a little bit tackier than mm. than the standard 360s. Yeah. They've got a bit of traction on them. I quite like sort of that bit through there where they've mm. got a little bit more to get your thumb onto. Yeah, so, yeah. That's yeah. what I, I. That's what I like. All right. Perfect. Okay. Oh, we'll do those for you. Cool. Okay. On the spec. Perfect. All right. All so, yeah, tight list, 
T150, mm -hmm. men's standard length, modus um, Tor 120 X Flex, yep. standard uh, loft on them, 28 degrees on the six iron, standard lie, 62.5 on the lie, D3 swing weight, and then you'd have the Sonar um, Plus on there, yeah, two layers of, of additional tape. I'll do you four to pitch, and then mm -hmm. you can let me know what you want to do in terms of whether you want, to, want, want me to change the quote, go five to pitch or not. I'll leave that mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah. Both options, I'd yeah. say. Uh, yeah. Five and pitch and four and see what they are. Perfect, yeah. Um, yeah, and go from there. Awesome. Say. Perfect. Uh, Spot that was, on. That was wicked. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, cheers, good, man. Good day to the end there. Yeah, it was all good. Really good.